Yeah, and then we we got married, and by the grace of God, we we got married with a holy mass, and um, we had our four children. And in those years, there were some, you know, some ups and downs. And um, it was in 2017 that I really had a crisis where I really had this depression come over me. And I didn't understand what was going on, but it was the year of divine mercy. And we were struggling. We, we were trying to find, you know, the good, good priests, good parishes. It was really difficult to find... Um, the good shepherds that will teach us catechesis or or or, or to, to to really help us come closer to our faith and we were searching but it felt like we were the doors weren't opening right it was really hard you were always trying to get a confession in and yeah for me this was also like i i don't go i don't go there i don't want to go to a confession and you tried and we did kind of go to different priests but i was always so I didn't have true contrition. I, I just went there to keep the peace, to just go with the flow there. And, and, and it felt good once you did it. Mm-hmm. But was I open about everything? Did I do a life confession? Did I really confess all my sins? No, I didn't. I was just like doing it to keep the peace, to go with my wife where she's, where her journey went. And she, she started to search more and more and more. She went into directions like, do um, you remember the, 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 the more this, uh, what was this, this, not this guy, Wayne Dyer? Yeah, moments? I started to get caught up with the New Age movement. New Age, right. And yoga. And that's where things got really bad because I was opening myself up to occult without realizing it and then having the temptation to give up on our marriage that was a hard time that was really hard yeah. really really hard we were almost falling apart there and and then that depression in 2017 where i had heard about the year of divine mercy and it reminded me to the years that i had been um a sister i had been a sister in the convent of saint faustina so close to the Jesus of divine mercy and living years of intense prayer and spiritual life. Um, and giving up the rosary was the biggest mistake because then I just, I, I can look back and see how quickly I became a Judas when I stopped praying the rosary. Um, I see the rosary as like a tiller that tills the soil of the soul. Um, I understand it that way now. And I see that that when you pray the five mysteries, uh, um, five decades, sorry, the five decade uh, chaplet, rosary, that it's like a soft till. It doesn't go so, so deep. It tills the soil. Um, but when you do two, uh, other the two mysteries, then it's a little bit your the tilling is a little bit deeper, and then when you do the three, it's even deeper, and then it allows the soil of the soul to to receive the seed of God's word and the sacraments um, that much deeper, and for it to like really get in there, to, for the faith to really be planted in and survive, and to bear fruit in faithfulness. Now, tilling is not easy, though, right? It's not easy. The prayer so of the rosary is it's not really easy. Hard it's a work. special grace. Yeah, it's a real struggle. So right. should we talk about when we started to still till? Right, when we started to till. Well, I cried out to God for mercy. I asked your mom to get a picture of merciful Jesus because she was going to Rome. Um, and she brought us an image of Jesus of mercy. We hung it up in our in our living room. And I cried out to him for mercy. I called out to him and said, rebuild me, make me new. And the first thing he did was bring me to his mother. And the way he did that is he led us to discover that movie, Mary's Land. Do you remember when we watched that together? That was about Medjugorje. Medjugorje, a testimonies from people in Medjugorje. And then it it was like this moment of remembering, oh, my childhood and praying the rosary and the good the good sides of prayer 
and the peace that I had. And I started to cry and I turned to you and I looked at you and I said, can we try to, to pray the rosary together? And you said, yes. And I hung up a picture of Mother Mary in our, beside our table, our, our dining room table. And I told her, take over Mother Mary, take over. Mm -hmm. our life lead us lead us back to the truth well you when you said let's start praying the rosary she she took the mini tiller it was just <laughs> it was like, ten, i said let's try one decade and one decade it started actually with one hail mary and then it was like one decade yeah, she started to increase the, the levels right it's like yeah. a game that you increase <laughs> like level one level two level one was was the hardest and afterwards the level 10 and so on we can talk about that later but level one to get to the entry level that was the hardest um ever because first i said yes i don't know why i said yes maybe right, also just to keep surprised. the peace or i don't know <laughs> because you turned turned 40 that year or maybe i just was nice and, <laughs> yeah. and maybe the movie mary's land touched me as well a little bit i believe um even though this place magigori was always creepy to me. I only heard negative stuff about it. Um, it's a, a cult, it's just fake messages there. I was not really interested in the messages per se and, and I didn't wanna I didn't want to go there at all. But you started then this rosary level one. Right, the, with the decade and that was really hard. You, at the table. Yeah. During sup after supper. After supper one decade. Imagine that you you eat you, you, you came home from work, you eat and then it's like rosary time. And it, it's not the rosary, it's just a decade. decade yeah. And we started. And I didn't lead it, she led it. I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to lead that thing. <laughs> yeah. And you started to be the leader, right, of the rosary as a woman, which is wrong. Well, the guy, the husband, the should, husband be the should be leading. But I learned that later from my spiritual director. Yeah. And uh, he put me into my pants, basically. And, and Joseph did. As <laughs> and well. St. Joseph. Yeah, and the, the uh, 10 Hail Marys, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just really, it's its a maximum three minutes or so. It's not much, right? But those three minutes were, uh, I had all the emotions you can think of, right? I was, sometimes I was like almost swearing the rosary out in my heart. I was like, this is not good. I don't like it. And that's how the prayer felt when I said it. And, and I just did it for the peace sake sometimes. Mm. But then I had days where I thought like, well, it felt good. It helped me when I had a rough day. But when I had a good day, I didn't want to do this, right? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and from there, Mother Mary, well, you, you, for you, it was a slower process. But Mother Mary just picked me right up. And she started to, to bring back my faith in Jesus in the Eucharist. And she placed a thirst in me to go to daily Mass. And that was something you struggled with. Seeing the change that was happening in me, intensifying my prayer life. Mm. Um, I kept telling you, you're going back to the convent. <laughs> you know, just go back. Leave me. <laughs> go back in the convent. Become a nun again. I mean, when if this is your way, you must have taken the wrong decision to get married. You know, if you want to be a prayer warrior and constantly putting Jesus first, not me first. <laughs> right. Like, that's actually also wrong, right? Yeah. You, I was always, I had my priorities wrong as well. I had, back then, I had priority number one, work. Priority number two, family. Priority number three, God. Yeah. I had to correct that. I have to twist it around. No, right? it's, no it's, it's good. But it takes time. And, and Jesus and Mother Mary, they're so patient and so gentle with us.